This is the fourth lecture for text unit 9. This lecture is concerned with stoichiometry and the ideal gas law. Consider the following question. This is the sort of question that environmental scientists may need to know the answer to. Consider the combustion of gasoline. Okay, gasoline is a mixture of many things, but as you know, one of the things is octane, or C8H18. So we'll call this gasoline. Two moles of it react with 25 moles of oxygen to make 16 moles of carbon dioxide and 18 moles of water. Notice the, the uh, labels for the phases, or physical states, I should say, liquid versus gas. If you burn one gallon of gas, which is about 4,000 grams, how many liters of carbon dioxide would be produced at a temperature of 21 Celsius and a pressure of one atmosphere? All right, you could still Use the mole highway to start these problems. Start with what you know. I've taken 4,000 grams of gasoline to four significant figures. And convert to moles. And you have a conversion factor with moles in the numerator, molar mass in the denominator. And then I can convert that to moles of CO2. This would be step two in this typical, typical stoichiometry problem. 16 moles CO2 over 2 moles of gasoline and then I stop. There are 280.1 moles of CO2. I stop and I write this down because the final step in a mole highway problem is to go from moles of what you want to know about to what the question asks about and what the question asks about is volume. Since CO2 is a gas, we can use the ideal gas law to go from moles to volume. First we'll need the temperature in kelvins, so I convert 21 Celsius to kelvins. And then the volume found from rearranging the ideal gas law is NRT over P. 280.1 gas constant, 294 kelvin, pressure of one atmosphere. All units cancel except liters, and the answer is 6760 liters. So this is one example of where how you can use the ideal gas law to finish or execute the final step of a stoichiometry problem. Alright, let's try this one. Take the same reaction. How many grams of water would be produced if 20 liters of oxygen were burned at a temperature of negative 10 and a pressure of 1.3 atmosphere? Right. This temperature and pressure describes the situation that the 20 liters of oxygen were at before burning. All right, this problem wants to know about water and provides us with information about oxygen. Step one of any stoichiometry problem is to start with what you know about and find moles. Here we will use the ideal gas law to find moles of oxygen. All right, so solve for the number of moles, which is PV over RT. We have all the units correct, 1.3 atmospheres over 20 liters, divided by the gas constant, divided by the temperature, negative 10 Celsius is 263.2 Kelvin, we subtract 273.15, and the answer, which I show in red, is 1.20 moles. We could take that into step two of stoichiometry problem, 1.20 moles. 1.20 moles of O2 can be converted using numbers from the balanced chemical equation into moles of the thing we want to know about. Moles of oxygen to moles of water in this step, moles of oxygen canceled. 
And then we can convert from moles to grams for water in one last calculation and get 15.6 grams of H2. So I suppose I should actually call this steps two and three. All right, here is the last example problem. Again, with this balanced equation, how many liters of oxygen would be needed to produce 45 liters of carbon dioxide if the temperature and pressure for both oxygen and carbon dioxide that is are 0 Celsius and 5.02 atmospheres. Remember 0 Celsius is actually 273.15 Kelvin. We can find moles of CO2 using N as PV over RT for the ideal gas law. A calculation produces 10.1 moles of CO2. That's step one of a stoichiometry calculation. Step two is to go from moles of CO2 to moles of O2. 10.1 moles of CO2 times 25 moles over 16 is 15.8 moles of O2. We now know moles of oxygen. Step three is finding the volume, the thing the problem asks about from the moles. Volume is NRT over P, so 15.8 moles, moles of oxygen, is inserted into the balanced chemical equation. And we calculate a volume of 70.5 liters of oxygen. All right, so we have executed all three steps. We did it one at a time but we have not used the molar mass. We have dealt exclusively in moles and volumes. All right, this concludes the fourth lecture for Unit 9.